Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello, today we will discuss weighable distribution and the contents of today's presentation is we start with the repair to first pro failure process parameters, then we discuss two parameters weighable distribution followed by three parameter weighable distribution and then parameter estimation by maximum likelihood method as well as graphical method. You all know this. You have seen this one several times that I do not want to discuss it further, it is known to you. Only I want to tell you that if you have time to fill your data, then if you have sufficient information and uh, it can be assumed that weighable distribution may be a fit to the data and that is what is today's presentation. So, uh, let us see the, some of the basics of weighable distribution. It is a interesting distribution and it is a continuous distribution and it has good relation with hazard rate because it can describe the hazard rate with its beta parameter. So, you see that uh, we discussed earlier what is hazard rate and then we have plotted the hazard rate in terms of bathtub curve and in the bathtub curve there are three regions infant mortality, useful ripe and wear out phase or burn in, insulin life and burn out phases. Now, Weibull distribution can fit this infant mortality or burn in phase. It can also model the wear out or burn out phase. It can also model the useful life or constant rate, hazard rate phase. So, when it becomes constant, it, it explains the constant is nothing but it is basically a exponential distribution that means exponential is a special case of weibull distribution. Now, that means it is a very, very much a flexible distribution. This distribution is appropriate for a system of complex component having number of components or parts whose failure is governed by most severe defect of its components or parts. So, the if you see the application of Weibull distribution, then you will find out that it is extensively used in reliability and safety studies and many failure analysis like corrosion resistance studies and your <coughs> in many of the electronics equipment like hardware, transistors and also mechanical equipment like ball bearing motors everywhere this is used and the variable of interest can be time to failure. Now, let us see the, uh, the uh, different parameters of Weibull distribution. The first one is unreliability and you all know what is unreliability that is basically the cumulative distribution function CDF. So, CDF is 1 minus e to the power minus eta t to the power beta. So, if I look into the CDF, so you are getting two parameters, one is eta, another one is beta. Eta is known for known as scale parameter and beta is known as shape parameter. eta a is also known as characteristic life and beta 
is shape parameter it basically determine the shape of the Weibull distribution. And if you your component or or a system failure follows Weibull distribution and then suppose for the example for the time being if you if you consider that we have n identical component fail which follows the same Weibull distribution means the eta and beta parameter are same for the all the component failure distribution. So, then then the the fundamental approach what we have adopted at the beginning that means n identical components are under test and if you find out the uh, find out the number of items survives after certain time intervals. So, ultimately from that uh, data from that experimental data you can very easily develop this distribution. Later we will see that how eta and beta can be estimated using graphical method. Now, if f x t is this obviously r x t will be 1 minus f x t which is nothing but e to the power minus eta t to the power beta. So, then if you take the derivative of this the del f x t by del t this you will be getting this you will be getting that for 1 it is 0 now for this one it will be beta eta eta t to the power beta minus 1 and e to the power minus eta t into eta t to the power beta. So, if you take derivatives of this here you are seeing you will get this. So, these are standard calculus. So, I am not going into the how after derivation f x t is like this it is easy and you can you will be able to do it. So, similarly we have seen earlier that the hazard rate or instantaneous failure rate is that R x t which is nothing but the density function divided by its survival function. So, f x t by R x t then then the this f x t by R x t this will give you this equation. Okay. So, it is obvious because here it is e to the power minus eta t to the power beta that will be cancelled out then beta eta eta t to the power beta minus 1 this will be the hazard rate function or hazard rate or hazard function. And as I told you that it has very good relation with with your bathtub curve. So, now see suppose you have data and you have computed eta and beta and after that you found that your beta value is less than 1 it means this region infant mortality region that means that hazard rate is decreasing function of time. Now, if it is constant beta is constant then this is basically talks about that the useful life beta is constant and when beta greater than 1 it is basically worn out phase or burn out phase. So, that means, if you know the beta value you know the component is operating under which phase okay, whether whether it is in the infant mortality phase or in the useful life or the worn out phase. Okay. So, <coughs> if you put your beta equal to 1 then what will happen to f x t? f x t will be 1 minus e to the power minus eta t because beta equal to 1. So, what will happen to then your reli this one uh, reliability e to the power minus eta t lambda t sorry eta t and similarly f x t beta equal to 1. So, it will be also similar and this equal to 1 this equal to 0. So, then eta e to the eta e to the power minus eta t which is nothing but the expression for exponential distribution. So, that means when beta equal to 1 all those that distributions starting from unreliability to hazard distribution all will be all will be related to, will be related to exponential distribution. What will happen here if I put beta equal to 1? 
then eta t to the power beta minus 1 this will be beta equal to 1 this will be 0. So, it is a beta and eta which are the which are the two constant of that Weber distribution. So, hazard rate is constant. Okay. So, it is it gives good insight about the health of the component which follows Weber Weber distribution. Now, <clears throat> we have created hypothetical examples what we have done here we have first taken t values t 0 to we increased it by 0 0.2 only 0 0.20. So, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 like this up to 4. So, as a result we have created 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 plus 11. 22, 22 data points, 22 observations or other way I can say that failures. So, <coughs> then we assume that this data follows Weber distribution and also we assume that this coming from the Weber distribution with eta equal to 1 and beta equal to 0 0.50. Please remember that this data may not be coming from Weber distribution at the same and, and even if it is coming from Weber distribution may not be the parameters two parameters eta equal to 1 or beta equal to 0.5. Let us assume that we have Weber distribution and then which basically fall uh, which be, which parameters are like this then we have created some t values and we have fitted to that distribution. For example, here like this is this is our able distribution 1 minus e to the power eta to the power beta. So, we assume that eta equal to 1 and beta equal to 0 0.5 then we created that distribution and then we we assume t values from 0 0.2 like this some increment values we have taken this. So, <coughs> let us consider in this way that means, we have assumed a distribuable distribution with eta equal to 1 and beta equal to 0 0.5 and in that case if we change the t values with increment point with increment sorry yes with increment 0 0.2 uh, 0.2 what will happen to f x t which is cumulative distribution function density function and hazard rate function that is what is plotted here. Then what we have done again we have basically that we have considered we have not changed eta rather we have changed beta here that beta is point uh, beta is 1 instead of 0.5 and that in that case rest of the things remain same and how the cumulative distribution function on reliability function density function and hazard rate changing that also we have computed and in the same manner we have computed it we have again changed the beta value to 3 eta value we kept it kept it 1 and again for the same t values that we found out the 3 functions. And then we have plotted all those things here. So, you just see what is the plot here the middle one which is basically the blue one is the first one where beta equal to 1 and eta equal to 1 when beta equal to 1 it is basically exponential distribution and it we see this see the f t is look like exponential distribution. And then the top one is beta 3 eta 1 you see the uh, see the basically the uh, cumulative probability distribution or unreliability how quickly it is increasing here change is increasing. And in the other one 0 0.5 and eta equal to 1 this one. When we see the PDF that mean density function for all those three cases you see the density function this is the first density, density function for this beta eta 1 and the second density function when beta equal to 0 0.5 like this and third one is when beta equal to 3 like this. 
and if you see the hazarded function for this all the three cases so beta 1 eta 1 it is constant the reason is it is basically exponential distribution and this one you see it is the decreasing failure rate which is the infant mortality part of the bathtub curve and here beta equal to 3 which is increasing failure rate. So, now this one if I if I manipulate if suppose I write this portion first then this first then if I write the second one then second one and then third one third one. So, it is basically bathtub curve like this. So, okay. so, that means depending on the beta values the different phases of a component failures can be modeled. So, in order to show this we have done this hypothetical case study hypothetical case. Okay. I hope you understand this. Now, what will happen if we change the eta values? So, eta values if you change you, uh, you will find out the change in the characteristic slide. Okay. What is characteristic life? Basically, two third of the observations or the failure within that particular unit of time, eta unit of time. Now, we will calculate the mean time to failure. So, in order to compute the mean time to failure, you know what is the, what is the uh, equation? Equation is T f t d t integration 0 to infinite that is mean time to failure. Straight cut you put T as it is f t value you know beta eta eta t to the power beta minus 1 and e to the power minus eta t to the power beta and d t. So, then this one this one if I write that t and eta eta t here then this into eta t into eta t to the power beta minus 1 then this is nothing but eta t to the power beta. What I mean to say this t this eta and eta t b minus 1 that means eta t into eta t to the power beta minus 1 which is eta t to the power beta that is what we have written. So, that means this one this one and this 3 combining getting this one remaining one is beta beta is here. Now, this portion remain as it is. So, in order to <coughs> integrate you just put eta t to the power beta equal to x then eta t will be x to the power 1 by beta and t will be x to the power 1 by beta by eta. If you take the derivative both derivative with reference to x then d t will be 1 by eta 1 by beta for this into x to the power 1 by beta minus 1 into d x. So, if t stand as t is 0 x will be 0 if t is infinite x will also be infinite. So, now we are putting this conversion in this equation. So, beta as it is eta t to the power beta is nothing but x. So, you put here x e to the power minus eta t to the power beta is nothing but e to the power minus x put here. Now, d t you, you have found out that d t is this value. So, put d t 1 by eta 1 by beta x to the power 1 by beta minus 1 into d x. So, then 1 by eta 0 to infinite now what happened e to the power minus x here 1 x is there x to the power 1 by beta minus 1 is there. So, it is x to the power 1 by beta and this beta this beta cancelled out 1 by eta is out of the integral and then this into d x this particular quantity. 0 to infinity to the power minus x x to the power 1 by beta the d x this will basically is, is the gamma function. So, gamma 1 by beta plus 1. So, that means the mean time to failure in, in case of variable distribution with parameter eta and beta. So, it is basically 1 by eta in gamma 1 by beta plus 1 the so gamma function where suppose gamma a gamma x equal to factorial x minus 1. Okay. So, if you know beta and eta then you know what will be the value of mean time to failure. 
For example, we have seen that beta equal, if beta equal to 1, okay, so then what will be the value here? 1 by eta gamma 2, which is 1 by eta into x minus 1 factorial 1, so 1 by eta. Okay. Now, in that case, if we find, if we choose value of eta equal to 1, then mean time to failure will be 1, which is given here. So, that means, depending on the value of eta and beta, the mean time, mean time to failure will change. Mean time to failure is 2, when it is decreasing failure rate like beta equal to 0 0.5, when it is increasing failure rate, it is basically with obviously, it is eta is the eta is important parameter, but if we consider eta equal to 1, what is the change in behavior in mean time you are finding out. So, eta is 1, then MTTF will be eta which is 1 when beta is constant, uh, beta equal to 1 which is exponential and it will be when decreasing failure rate beta equal to 2 MTTF equal to 2, when it is increasing failure rate MTTF is less than equal to 1, keeping that eta equal to 1 characteristic life is 1. Okay. Now, we will see the three parameter distribution. In three parameter distribution apart from the that is scale parameter, so what we have seen eta equal to scale parameter characteristic slide, then your beta equal to shape parameter, shape parameter and then we will use another parameter called gamma which is location parameter. The what is the location parameter? You have seen the shape and scale parameter. Location parameter it basically talks about failure, failure free life. That means, it will not that t will not start from 0, here you just see that t is that phi is the location parameter t value that phi to infinite not from 0. It is something like this, when your phi equal to 0, you may think that it is your able distribution, but if phi equal to 5, it may start with from this. So, this is what is your what is the location parameter. If this location parameter is used, what actually happening that t minus phi that location parameter here okay, here I have written gamma, let you write phi here. Okay. So, then R x t is this and P d f will be this, you just see that with reference to the two parameter whatever you got, the changes is only instead of t you are writing t minus 5. So, in two parameter model what we have written about this reliability e to the power minus eta t to the power beta, when it is three parameters location parameter is coming we are writing eta t minus 5. So, t is replaced by t minus 5. Okay. So, similarly density case also replaced by this, replaced by this. So, most of the time we see that this phi, phi we consider as 0 and we model it, but there are situations where you may find that failure free life uh, will be considered and then the phi, phi value appropriate phi value will be chosen. Otherwise, once data is given may be you can use the appropriate parameter estimation methodology and find out whether it is a three parameter model or a two parameter model. Now, let us see that how parameter can be estimated using graphical methods. So, we will consider the two parameter variable distribution and you know the uh, distribution function for two parameter variable distribution, we have already seen this one. Now, let us see that how it can be represented in linear form. So, what you do? You first take 
uh, manipulate this equation in this form. So, f t equal to 1 minus e to the power minus eta t to the power beta. If I if I do something like this, I can write 1 minus f t equal to e to the power or e x p to the power minus eta to the power beta that can be written. So, this minus is there I want to make it plus. So, I can write 1 by 1 minus f t equal to this is e to the power eta t to the power beta. So, if you now take log if you take first log of this then you will get eta t to the power beta. If you take another log then you will get beta eta t l log t and beta log eta. So, okay. so, now then this equation that log log 1 by 1 minus f t equal to beta log t and beta log eta. So, t is the variable here, but beta and eta are the parameters. So, it looks like y equal to m x plus c, where y is the left hand side log log 1 by 1 minus capital F t and m is basically here your m x, x will be your log t m x. So, x will be log t m is equivalent m equal to beta c equal to beta log eta. So, essentially you got a linear equation which is a straight line y equal to m x plus c and now if you plot if you when you have the data. So, when if you plot the time to failure data then you and plot between this y and x where y is log log 1 by 1 minus f t and x is log t then if the data come from the uh, two parameter variable distribution then you will get this kind of straight line. Okay. So, the data we have given that point 0 to 4 did that increment point 2 we have generated earlier. So, the same data we have used and we found out that the that the the log log of this curve these points are like this. So, true sense if I join all the points it is something like this something like this. So, it is a little de deviated from the uh, linear or the straight line, but okay, a most approximate straight line is this one that the base straight line is this one which is the dotted line here. So, from this straight line you are able to get the slope of the straight line which is our m and also intercept of the straight line which is our c. Now, if we see the equation m is equivalent to beta and c is beta log eta once you know uh, the beta value and c value then you will be able to find out the eta value by algebraic manipulation. So, in this manner we have developed and then we found out that the beta value is 1.2445 and eta value is 0 0.4346. So, um, it is it is basically beta is more than 1 and eta is less than 1 whatever may be, but this is the this is the uh, way of graphically uh, estimating the parameters for two parameter weighable distribution. Okay. So, <coughs> when when it will be um, three parameter distribution then the things will be complicated and at the same time the graphical method you see that the approximation is there. So, people will be interested to know what is the uh, other method. So, that is like the maximum likelihood method. We will give you the glimpse of maximum likelihood method how it will be applied in this case and then we will finish today's lecture. All of you know 
that whatever observation you collect they are independent and as the observations are coming from Weibull distribution. So, each of the observation will follow this popular Weibull distribution with the parameters of that distribution. So, that means, every time values time to failure values this values can be thought of coming from the Weibull distribution and as a result the failure the density function will be will be same with the means the parameter will be same, but only t will be replaced by t 1, t will be replaced by t 2 like t n when you are collecting in or you are planning to collect in data uh, points entity uh, values. So, then their joint probability distribution will be will be the multiplication of the individual probability distribution, because every uh, variables every time it to failure values are independent to other and as a result their joint probability distribution will be the uh, multiplication of their individual distribution. So, this is the second one. So, that n number of p d a density function is multiplied here. Then you take the likelihood that therefore, the likelihood will be this what is this all those multiplication if you if you just do algebraic manipulation you will be getting this. Then you take the log of this because it is it is a multiplicative one if you take log then you are getting some kind of addi additive equation and then now you have log and log likelihood like log of likelihood then you take the derivative of that log likelihood put it to 0 with reference to beta first parameter the shape parameter similarly with reference to eta the scale parameter. But what happened you will find out that it is not a completely additive model here times are additive and multiplicity some additive terms are terms are additive and within one term there are multiplication. So, what is happening here that is why even if you take the derivative of this. So, you will not get a closed form solution that means, some kind of uh, few linear uh, equations which will be simultaneously solved, uh, but it will it will be difficult to solve in this manner. You will get some equations, but it will not be straight cut. Okay. So, you will get two equations from here and here two equations you will get and those equations cannot be directly solved. So, you require numerical methods to solve it. For example, Newton Raphson method will be used to, to find out the parameters eta and beta. So, if you consider three parameter model similarly you have to find out the likelihood and then take the log likelihood and take the derivative there will be three equations one with respect to shape parameter another with respect to scale parameter another with respect to location parameter and again you use numerical methods like Newton Raphson method and then finally, get the get the most likely hood values for the parameters and and I hope that you have understood the concept here. I already told you that we have to we are basically following uh, primarily the first book followed by the second book when in developing the lecture material. Thank you very much.